word. Oh, God. Genesis chapter 41, verse 57, and then Genesis 42, verse 5. Thank God for my baby, Ayanna. She created the slides for me this morning. I was still not happy with my guy not having the slides from Wednesday. So I couldn't trust him. So I had to call on my go-to girl, Ayanna. And she took care of business. So thank God for that. I'm, I'm just going to talk to y'all today. I'm not going to preach. <laughs> so I said, yeah, right. But I'm just going to talk to you about some stuff a little bit. Genesis 41, 57, and it reads, and all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine, somebody shout famine, the famine was so sore in all the lands. Genesis 42, verse 5, and the sons of Israel came to buy corn. These are his brothers who he hadn't seen in over 20-some years because they were the brothers that threw him into a ditch and he was sold into Egypt and they hadn't seen him. They thought that he was dead. Now there's a famine and because of the famine they hear about there's food in Egypt not knowing that the man that's ruling Egypt second in command to Pharaoh was the little brother who they threw in the hole because they was jealous of him because he had a coat of many colors. So the famine led them to come to find out that this man who we thought was dead is running everything. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn amongst those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. I want to use as a title to today's message, I found favor in the famine. I found favor in the famine. Tell somebody, I found favor in the famine. I found favor in the famine. As I just told you, Joseph was sold to the Egyptians not knowing that his brothers were one day, God was going to make sure that one day they was going to have to see what they did to this man face to face. One day they was going to have to see how God had rose up the little brother who they got mad because he told them a dream that he saw the sun and the moon and the 12 stars bowing down to him. And now here they come from a land that didn't have any food. And who are they getting ready to bow down to? Who are they getting ready to get food from to make them a survivor? None other than the young boy who they were jealous of. You never know who you gonna have to need one day the people that we're jealous of the people that we're talking about the people that we don't want to support may be the very main people to provide us with food on our table oh God in the famine is what led the brothers back to Joseph it's amazing Darlene how God can use a famine oh another name for a famine is ain't got because when you in a famine, you ain't got nothing. When you in a famine, you short every day. When you in a famine, it's hard to splurge. It's hard to take your 20 and go to McDonald's with because you ain't got it to spare. My God, my God. Joseph had food, but he didn't have a family. Joseph had wealth, but he didn't have love. So Joseph was just as much in a famine as the people who didn't have any food. Where are they coming from to Joseph? They coming to Joseph for food. Joseph was looking for them for love. They coming to Joseph to get food. And Joseph said, that's my family. Them the people that I never received love from. See, you can't tell who's in a famine right now in Jesus' people church. Because all of us look like we got it going on. But only our hard nose was really, really missing. Preach, holy ghost. You can be in the bed with the prettiest or the most handsome husband or wife in the world, but still be in a famine because they won't let you touch them. I sound like I've been in a famine before. You can be married to a famine. They won't talk to you. They won't make love to you. They put you in a famine. Have you ever raised a famine? You got a child. They won't even speak to you in the same house. And your house has become a famine. Have you ever 
dealt with a famine before. Have you ever been to the store and you couldn't find your favorite cookies? That's a little famine. Have you ever been to the beauty supply store and couldn't find your favorite color weave? That's a little famine. I told you, asked me a couple weeks ago, how are you? My heart look, she said. I said, uh, the tent don't seem the same. She said, well, all the beauty stores in Memphis, they, I can't find a burgundy 950 by Altry Milk. I said, well, all the girls in Orange Mountain wear that color. That's why I sold out. Tosha is in a famine. She can't find burgundy 950. So she had to get a different color tent, and they put her in a famine. You ever tried to have a baby and you couldn't have one? That's a famine. Famines come in all shapes and sizes. You ever tried to lose weight but couldn't lose it? That's a famine. You ever tried to gain weight and couldn't gain it? That's a famine. You ever tried to change jobs and no one will hire you? That's a famine. That's a famine. You ever tried to start a business but no customers will come? That's a famine. But tell somebody, I found favor in my famine. Have you ever tried to find God without Jesus? That's a famine. You ever tried to find peace without God? That's a famine. You ever tried to find a good, humble preachers and teachers outside of Jesus people church? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a famine. Famines don't like you. Famines don't talk to you. You keep trying to talk to a famine and the famine don't talk back. Famines don't say nothing at all. Famines are quiet. Famines don't speak, but you can hear them. Famines don't say anything, don't touch you, but you can feel them. Famines roll their eyes at you when you're hungry. Famines laugh at you when you're sad. Famines know what you need and they don't give it to you. Famine know you need love and they don't give it to you. Famine know you need attention and affection and they don't give it to you. Famines know that you need a listening ear and they won't give it to you. Famines know that you need somebody to pray for you and they won't even give it to you. Famines don't care about anybody but themselves. A famine is a serial killer. A famine has killed more people's hopes than dope. A famine has killed more people's dreams than crack. Famines have killed more people's desires. Famines have killed more people's happiness than anything else in the world because a famine is a serial killer. Most of your tears have come from famines. Oh my God. If you trace back every tear, if you trace back every heartbreak that you had, it's related to a famine. A famine disguises itself as mean people, as bad attitudes, but it's a famine. Most of the most egregious, embarrassing, and disappointing sins that I've ever committed was when I was in a famine. I didn't mean to go there, y'all, but the famine took me there. People have been stranded on islands with a few people, and they resorted, they didn't have Big Macs around, and they resorted to cannibalism. They resorted to eating each other to survive because they were in a famine. Famines will make you do stuff that you have never done in your life. Famous will make you act in such a way you won't even believe that you're doing it. Famous will make you do stuff and say stuff that you never would have said had not you been in a famine. I told you I've done some sins that I could have never imagined doing, but I was in a famine. Some folks have had abortions that they never would have felt like they would have ever had, but the relationship, the situation in was such a famine. Good God Almighty. It drew them to actions and activities that they never would have imagined they would have participated in because famines don't care about your feelings. 
Oh my God, I didn't mean to cuss like that. I didn't mean to fight like that. I didn't mean to hit you like that. But I was in the famine. Oh my God. That's why we don't judge people at Jesus People Church because we don't know who's in a famine. Why we don't try to figure out people's business in Jesus People Church because you never know you could be judging somebody that's in a famine. You could be talking about somebody that's in a famine. You should you could be you could be backbite on somebody that's doing some stuff that they never would have done. But they but but they but they but they but they're in a famine. Preach Holy Ghost. This could be the day in which their famine ends because I'm going to show you how to find favor in your famine. Tell somebody that's called famine favor. It's called famine favor. I'm going to show you how to get famine favor. Preach holy Ghost. Famine favor is when people who are at the top get jealous of you even though you're still at the bottom. <laughs> that's famine favor. Famine favor is there are people that's, 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 that's in higher positions than you but they're jealous of you because you got famine favor. You got folks jealous of you even though you at the bottom. That's famine favor. You got big shots jealous of you. You got folks that make more money than you, jealous of you. You got folks that look better than you, jealous of you. You got folks that drive better than you, jealous of you. You got folks with more education than you, that's jealous of you. All because you got famine favor. Joseph has famine favor. Famine favor means I got favor even when I'm at the bottom. Even though I'm at the bottom, I still got favor. I got so much favor that people at the top wish they were me. Oh, God. I got so much favor that people at the top wish they could go back to the bottom because we make the bottom look so good. Tell somebody, that's called famine favor. We got so much favor, we got the bottom looking better than the top. That's how much favor we got. We got so much favor. We got the bottom looking better than the top. We got having a small church looking better than having a big church. That's famine favor. That's, 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 about, that's, famine, that's famine favor. We got having a small house looking better than having a big house. That's fam People be like, I wish I ain't had these bills. I wish I, wish I had their bills. That's why they don't look as stressed out as me, because they don't get the bills I got. <laughs> That's why it's called famine favor. Uh -huh. We got having used cars looking better than having new cars, because it's famine favor. When you got famine favor, whatever you have looks better than wherever they are. That's famine favor. Let me give you the realest thought ever taught, number 707. Realest thought ever taught, 707. The famine is a sign that God is born with the devil. <laughs> a famine is a sign that God is born with the devil. God's about to play some games with the devil. Because when God wants to play with the devil's head, God sends a famine. Because the devil stopped thinking that the famine got the saints in trouble. He too dumb to understand it's the famine that brings saints to devil. See, the devil think that because you in a famine and because we facing the famine, oh, now we in trouble. Oh, we about to lose. We about to never rise up again. The devil start to make people feel like that God is not on their side, but really God is setting us up for the devil. All in a famine. First Corinthians 2 and 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. See, a famine is a mystery because you don't know how you got there. Famine is a mystery. You don't know how you ended up in a famine. You don't understand where a famine came from. It's a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God obtained before the world unto our glory which none of the demons of the princes of the world knew. For had they known it, they would have never crucified our Lord of glory. 
had the enemy known, he would have never put Jesus on the cross, the Bible says. Had the enemy known that Jesus was going to rise again on the third day, Sunday morning, he would have never crucified him. The devil, had he had known that fame has led you to pray. Had he known that fame has led you to a way out. Tell about it. He didn't know what the fame was going to bless me. He didn't know that the famine was going to bless me. Good God Almighty. Uh-huh. The hell you went through turned around to be your blessing. The famine that you went through turned around to be your way out of escape. The, the situation that you faced that was about to cause you to commit suicide turned to one of the greatest moments of your life. And the devil was calling it a famine, but he didn't know it was a part of your favor. Watch this, watch this, Genesis 41, 57. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was sore in all the lands, 42 and 5. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. I would have never moved had it not been for the famine. The famine made them move, Keisha. The famine made them move. They would have stayed there forever, but it was the famine that made them move. That's how you know how bad God is, because he can use a famine to bless you just as easily as he uses a job to bless you. Uh, that's the kind of God we serve. He can bless you with a famine just like he can bless you with a million dollars. But you got to be wise enough to see God in everything. Preach holy ghost. Genesis 41, 57. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn because that the famine was so in the land. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn amongst those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Can't nobody bless you in a famine like God. It feels really good to be able to say nothing can happen to us. It feels good to be able to say that in a famine, I can still eat salmon. In the midst of my famine, we still eating good. In the midst of our famine, we still rejoicing. In the midst of our famine, we got folks jealous of us because they don't understand that we know how to take a licking and keep on ticking in the midst of our famine. <laughs> yes, I, I'm going through just like you but the only difference is you can't tell because I hang on to God's tail that's how we make it out of a famine not long ago I had gone to Nashville and on my way back to Memphis from Nashville I had a flat tire on the expressway First time it's ever happened. I had a flat tire on the expressway. And as I'm driving on the expressway, I take an exit to the gas station. Roll to the gas station. And right there at the gas station is a subway. And God says, why you rest? Enjoy a foot long on me. He could have left me stranded like many cars on I-40 East. And I don't got nothing to eat. I can enjoy a foot long. Hallelujah. While I'm waiting on the tow truck to come on. All because God knows how to take care of his babies in a famine. God has been blessing you with foot loans and blessings and amazing things. Even though you've been going through hell and high water, he still gave you a soft landing. Other people that have gone through what you've gone through, they don't look like you look like because God gave you a soft landing. I preached the message a long time ago. I thank God for the soft landing. It could have been rougher than this. It could have been harder than this. It could have been more tragic than this. It could have been worse than this. But God controls the famine. <laughs> I can eat salmon in the middle of a famine. Give me the foot long salmon sandwich. Preach holy ghost. Oh God. And that's what God does. It's the storm that leads you to your destination. TMZ, put the sailboat on the screen. It's the storm that puts you to your destination. Do you know what a sailboat is? 
You know what a sailboat is? A sailboat, a sail, a sailboat uses the sail to catch the wind of a storm. And the sail uses the storm to propel you to wherever you need to go. While the wind is blowing and the storms are coming, most people sink, but because saints have sails, because saints have sails, the storms don't sink us. They make us swifter to our destination. That's why I praise the Lord, because I thank him for using the storm to push me to my next destination. He used the storm to push me out of the people that were crucifying me faces. He used the storm to take me out of a hellish situation. He used the storm to take me to my peace. He used the storm to take me to my pleasure. He used the storm to take me to my next level. Oh, my God. Oh, God, I feel this thing. Oh, God, I had to laugh about some stuff I can't preach about. But God used the storm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? When you laugh about and you can't tell nobody on your road, what God just revealed unto you, Laura. You can't tell nobody on your road what God took you from point A to point B. And it would have never happened had it not been for the storm. I, I got to say a moment. I, I, I just, it's a sailboat. The storm is like a sailboat. I, it, saints don't sink. Saints sail. Saints don't sink. Saints sail. That's why we can't tell the hell that you've been going through. Because you still been selling. You ain't took no days off from work because you had a panic attack. You still been selling. You ain't took no days off from work because you couldn't get the loan. You ain't took no days off from work because the stuff that you working on didn't come through. You still been selling right past it. And when you got famine favor, God uses the storm that the devil sent to cause you to sail to your next destination. Oh, God, that's how we make it in the famine, because saints have sails. Every time you blow something our way, I'm going to catch it. Every slander, every backstab and backbite, every lie, I'm going to catch it and go higher with it. Uh-huh. Tell somebody, it's a mistake to reject me. It's too late to come get me after you reject me. Mm -hmm. It's a mistake to reject me. And it's too late to come get me after you reject me. Because you want to come get me now you see that I'm going to another level. You want to come get me now that you see that I'm blessed and highly favored. Now you want to come get my coin. Now you want to come to where I stay. Now you want to come to Egypt. Because you know we got it going on in Egypt. You know we got the blessings and favor in Egypt. But you could have had it a long time ago. But you threw me away. The brothers could have been had the favor that Joseph brought, but they threw him away. You better be careful what you throw away. You better be careful what you throw away. You better be careful what you throw away because you may not be able to ever get that like that again. Tell somebody, I'm hard to replace, baby. I'm hard to replace. Uh, I'm hard to replace. I'm hard to catch. I'm hard to find. I'm hard to get. I'm hard to get replaced. I'm hard to come again. <laughs> I'm on hard. Don't reject me. Uh, don't, 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 don't reject me. In Matthew 21, 42, and Jesus said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. The main people they used to talk about, Joseph, they laughed at him, and now he's the one they gotta go to for corn. Now, now I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, don't get mean when they start coming back to you. Don't, don't, don't get mean, they just figure out ain't no other place to go but you. Don't be mad because you the only place that got the source. Don't be mad because you the only place that got the anointing and the favor and the blessings and the breakthrough. Don't be mad about it. Just be glad about God chose you. 
Just be glad that they coming to you and you ain't running back up to them. Don't be mad about it. Because it could be the other way around. It could be us having to run to them. So don't be upset when they got to run to us. Oh, God. You just keep a good spirit and a good attitude about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. God said, God, God told me this. God said, don't get mad at the famine. He said, don't get mad at the sam at the at the at the famine. <laughs> don't don't get mad at the famine. Second Corinthians 4 and 7. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. We get mad at things that don't look like it's going our way. It's, it's, a, it's, a common, it's a common reaction to get mad at stuff that look like it ain't going our way. We get mad at circumstances. We get mad at events. We get mad at people that's laughing at us. But in Micah 7 and 8, the prophet said, Rejoice not against me, O my enemies. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Good God Almighty. He said, I ain't going to get mad at you. Because while you're laughing at me, God is working something out behind the scenes. <laughs> while you think that I'm down, God's getting ready to raise me back up. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. This is what he says. This is what he said. Genesis 41, 57. And all the countries came into Egypt, into Joseph, to buy corn because the famine was sore in all the lands. And the sons, his ten, his, his, his ten brothers, because the baby brother stayed home. Benjamin stayed home. And, and the sons of Israel came to buy corn amongst those that came for the famine in the land of Canaan. Mm-hmm. They was in the land of Canaan. But God said, don't be mad at the famine. God said, be glad for the famine. Because the famine is a sign that God is around the corner. The famine is a sign that God heard your cry. The famine is a sign that God is up to something. The, the, the famine is good news. I'm going to tell you something. Bad news is really good news. Anything that sounds like it's bad news is really good news because God's going to flip the script for you. The entire story of Ruth and Boaz started because of a famine. The entire story. People forget about that love story. They forget about everything that happened in Ruth chapter 1 verse 1. Go to Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 and, let, and let's see what happened. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in a country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And it all started because of a famine. <laughs> it all started because of a famine. The hell that you had to go through started your character. It is the hell that you had to face. It started your prayer life. It is the tribulations and the trials and the tests that you had to go through. It started your praise. We heard Timothy say he was in the classroom and there was a famine of teaching going on. He said the teachers weren't doing no teaching. And he said the Holy Ghost put a thought in his head. Start writing a book. Your book developed from a famine. You better hear what I'm saying. Your famine is your blessing, baby. You better praise God for the famine because you wouldn't be where you are today if it had not been for the famine. When we started Jesus People Church, this I can tell you, we had more walkie talkies than people. We had somewhere we went to, back then it was Radio Shack. We brought about 20 walkie talkies because we thought parking lots was going to be full of people. After about 45 minutes, we went ahead and put them walkie talkies up and said, Welcome in to Jesus People Church. And we know, yep, come, somebody on the parking lot, find more, find more car spaces. We need eight more car spaces, move the car spaces. 
didn't even use them walkie talkies. But the famine taught us how to pray without ceasing. See, if you're in a famine today, you're going to be on the front row tomorrow. That's what I learned about the famine. The famine today puts you in the front row tomorrow. Because every now and then, God sends a famine like a booster shot to reinforce your faith. <laughs> the famine is like a booster shot. It reinforces your faith. That's why Romans 8 and 28, it tells us, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to his purpose. God uses the famine to work together for your good. God used the famine to show you what you really made of. God used the famine to prove to you that ain't nobody on your side but the Lord. Can't nobody do you like the Lord can. God uses the famine to show you that he ain't forgot all the hell you've gone through. Because he exalts you in everybody's face in the midst of the famine. Now, that's when you know it's special. I only got a couple more minutes. That's when you know that it's special. Because it's easy for God to exalt you when everything is going well. Because people expect it. But they don't expect when you're in the middle of a famine. And you become the head and not the tail. They don't expect in the middle of no job. In the middle of no support. In the middle of no prayer warriors on your side. In the middle of nobody knowing you be. That's why you had no prayer warriors. Because you weren't telling nobody what you was going through. And in the middle of it, God still raised you up. You got to be able to learn that the famine is on your side. Tell somebody, the famine is on your side. The famine is on your side. Minister to somebody right quick and tell them, the famine is on your side. Jesus went to the cross through 40 and two generations just so I can teach you that there's salmon in the famine and the famine is on your side. So